Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Jackson who is a free to play legacy ascendable. He is available in the Ascendance Tower from ascending 4 stars to 5 stars. He obviously was part of leaks a couple of seasons ago. Obviously no one knew he was going to be an ascendable at that point so if you did pick him up then you have got your hands on an ascendable. He has just been released. If you have him maxed out you can send him instantly. There will potentially be offers or a stash or something up to purchase this character if you so wish. But this is Jackson as a five star. I did go through this once it was leaked. And as a five star, he's a medic, he's a healer, and he has a leader skill which gives 30% attack and 30% HP to all strong teammates. So the idea is that when he becomes a six star, that just gets buffed up with the leader skill. Same with the adrenaline rush will just get buffed up. But it changes quite dramatically. And this is something that I have discussed in the past in terms of five stars going to six stars and having their ma just a massive change to how they're set up but we'll look at it as a six star and as you can see here is jackson he has got 1500 attack 1821 defense 2036 hp he is a strong traitor character he is still defined as a medic we'll look at his adrenaline rush and it's called defiant recovery it is 76 AP cost, so that's good. It isn't stupidly high like 85, which we've been given a few times, unfortunately. But this is 76, which is great. Deal 300% damage to a line of enemies. So now he's doing damage, which he wasn't doing before. He has extremely low attack stat for that sort of damage. So it doesn't really, isn't going to hit very hard. It's actually pretty funny because he's got the same percentage damage attack that Sawyer has. And Sawyer is a damage dealer. It doesn't make any sense. I think this character has been kind of reverted from a medic which would sit on a defense team to more of an offensive leader considering some of the other changes that are going to be coming in. All teammates regain 40% of their max HP for one turn so it's just a 40% heal and that's down from the 50% of their max HP that he had as a 5 star and recover from all attack penalties which is actually worse than what it was as a 5 star. It's come down from all attack and defense penalties to just being only attack penalties. So he's definitely being geared more towards this attacking character. But he's not very good as an attacking character with that rush. He, he just isn't very good. He's more of a support character. And we don't need more support characters in attack teams, basically. And, and, and unfortunately, that's what we're being dealt here. Now, he's also got an active skill, of course. And it is Recover, Stun, and Impair. It has an initial cooldown of two, a cooldown of three turns. And up to two teammates recover from Stun and Impair. Now, because this character is being moved to be more geared towards an attacking character, it isn't as bad that he has a double-barreled active skill, but I really don't like these personally. It's much better to have a very defined active skill just doing one thing. For instance, when it comes to active revive, you see a lot of the free-to-play characters have something else attached to that, like AP gain on G2 Rick. You also have taunt on League Sandy, and that makes the active skill worse because they will just do it for the taunt side of things or the AP gain side of things when there isn't anyone to revive. So that is actually like a makes the character a lot worse than they should be. Whereas something like this isn't as bad because recover regardless of when it's going to be used should recover in a in a good situation i think recover impair can sometimes be a bit crap on defense teams if i'm honest like you'll see someone recover their own impair when it's a one turn impair which is just pointless to be honest but like i said it does look like jackson's going to be moved more towards an attacking character so you can completely control when you use recover stun and impair and it has to be said that i don't think there are any free to play characters within strong that actually have a recover impair i think the only character i recall that has a recover impair as a strong character is pamela and she i know she got moved into sort of like the side characters within premiere but she's still not free to play by any stretch now he has got a leader skill and it has been massively changed from his five star leader skill to his six star leader skill but it is really weird because it's not really in line with other leader skills of the same type as six star it's almost like half a five star leader skill and half a six star leader skill i'm not sure if this is an, a mistake it probably will never be changed even if it was a mistake if this was a, a promo character it would be 100 percent fixed because it should be better than it is right now if it's if it's meant to be like this it's been changed from 30% attack and 30% HP into what we actually needed is an all melee leader that gives AP to all melee. But instead of it giving a huge bonus, it only gives very large. All melee teammates gets 40% attack, which is great, and a very large bonus to AP when attacking. 
when if you compare that to so let's say tough andrea all ranged teammates get 40 percent attack and a huge bonus to ap when attacking you compare that to Camilla, all many teammates get 40% attack and a huge bonus to AP when attacking. That 2 AP can make the difference. And where it makes the most difference is those 85 AR characters, which is obviously where a lot of characters have been released. Within Strong have been 85 AR. We've had John, who was free to play. We had Sean, who was free to play. We also had Solange, who was free to play. All 85 AR characters, all strong. And those characters are not going to really benefit from this very large bonus as much as they should have. We've got Madison who's in the 5 star token wheel right now. And she gives all teammates get a large bonus to AP when attacking. And as a 5 star she would have had a medium bonus when attacking. Because that's generally how it works. 5 stars had a medium bonus if you remember. Fast Ben, very popular leader in the 5 star era. He would have been given a large bonus if he was ever a 6 star. Madison, same sort of deal. 6 star, large bonus. Normally you just get that one up. It should be all teammates get 40% attack and a huge bonus to AP when attacking. Now he does not have an attached weapon. Of course, it is just going to be you can slot whatever weapon you want into his hands. It does look like he's been shifted from a more of a defensive character into this more attacking character. I think you could potentially use him on a defense team still, but he's not going to be mega useful in terms of his... Rush is not that spectacular for a defense team. It's just a little hill. He doesn't really do enough damage. He's not great for an attack team. You're mainly going to use him. He's kind of reminds me of six star Carl, where it's kind of like he's all round average, but the most important thing about it is his leader skill. And that's the same with Jackson. He isn't a great character. He's kind of all round average or below average in a lot of places. I would say his adrenaline rush is really, really bad. It's worse than his 5 star and generally 5 star rushes get increased when they become a 6 star. But his leader skill is important, if you, especially if you want to run melee teams. If you can see a team where he'd be useful for you, then it may be worth ascending. But you're basically sacrificing a character to have him as a leader because he's not going to do much else. Like a little bit of a heal, a little bit of a recover on all attack penalties and a little bit of damage. He's not really doing much with that rush unfortunately. Now for a bit of fun, when this character was initially leaked, I did create the character myself. And this is something I wanted to do with all the leaked characters going forward in terms of like comparing the leaked character to what I created and basically getting your input on which one do you think is better, which one do I think is better. And personally, I think the one I created is better based on obviously the fact that I kept it as a defensive character. I went with all teammates regain 35% of their max HP for two turns, so that's a nice heal. Recover from all penalties and gain 40% attack for two turns. And this is exactly what we've been seeing on characters is their five star getting a little bit of a boost when they go to six star. And the boost here was a two turn heal. It was a reduced amount of heal from 50% to 35%. But it was also an attack bonus on top, which is kind of what these Eric defense teams would need because there's so many of them that have defense bonuses. They've got defense bonuses from Douglas, Joshua, and Eric. You don't need another defense buff, so an attack buff would be quite nice. And he could be a utility character on an attack team because of that. Now, the active skill is obviously very strong. It's a weakened version of Ravens, and it was just maybe to have a bit more balance between free to play and pay to win. But I didn't expect that sort of active skill to come in, so I definitely my active skill trumps the active skill that came in. But the leader skill, I'd say, is the only place where I'm like, okay, that's better. But I, I still think there should be a huge bonus on that leader skill with the actual release of the character. And it is very disappointing that it is a very large bonus. So overall, I think Jackson is more of the same, unfortunately. I think he's one of the worst characters that we've had out of the characters that we've re had released as free-to-play ascendables. The other characters that we had released this year in terms of strong and tough characters to make those strong, tough defense teams, the likes of Eric and Douglas... Those are actually pretty good characters. They work together well. They have a sort of a, an actual position in a defense team. Whereas this character does not have a position in an attack team. He's basically just been kind of muddled up to be that leader that has been requested. But been made that average character. Just think about this character going into promos right now. Would he even sell at all? No. And that's the kind of character we need a character to combat the current promos. And Jackson is just not it. We need a, an actual decent leader. I think the better leader, if you wanted to make a leader skill for all melee with a huge bonus on attack and 40% attack would 100% be strong heavy or strong OG Michonne with the camouflage. Both of those characters make sense and they're both good damage dealers and they're actually damage dealers. They would be good attacking leaders. But this is a bit of a miss for me. I think we've had misses on the last two ascendables 
and we've had such a long wait for really average characters which is a massive massive letdown i'm hoping obviously <laughs> gotta keep up the hope but hoping the next character is actually gonna be good we definitely need attacking characters that are gonna make the difference and actually be useful in any way possible but i just don't think jackson is really going to be it unless you're massively massively desperate for that all many lead that gives ap on attack right now do tell me what you think about jackson though guys that is the end of my video thank you very much for tuning in and as always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving